Hello everyone, welcome to another lecture of drug delivery engineering and principles. So, so far in this course we have discussed several things, initially we discussed uh, pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics of the drugs, we discussed about pro drugs and then from there on we started talking about how can we then change this free drug delivery to something else, so that it gives us a very high um, sustained release as well as controlled delivery. So, um, in that we have discussed uh, first of all polymer drug conjugates which is essentially adding the polymers to the drug which increases their size as well as prevents degradation. We have even talked about uh, using some sort of a matrix, so it could be a reservoir system, so you have a big reservoir and then you have slow slow release of your drug through that either just by diffusion through a small pore or by an osmotically and driven pressure that causes the release of this. Then we have also talked about uh, matrix based delivery, so these could be non erodible that means they would not degrade, but then the drug can slowly diffuse out from these systems. Um, once you implant this you will have to basically uh, do a surgery to first put them in and then another surgery to take them out or you can change that by then uh, making them bio erodibles and what that does is uh, um, they, the implant will just erode and as it erodes the drug will come out. Uh, it could be a combination of both erosion and diffusion and uh, in that way you will only have to do one surgery because once you put it in after a certain period of time which could be weeks or months depending on what type of implant it is, it will just degrade and go away. Uh, then we finally discussed uh, some sort of examples of these two matrix types of delivery using hydrogels. So, hydrogels can again be both either erodible or non erodible but then depending on uh, what you are using uh, in terms of polymer they might degrade or they might stay there forever and then we discussed how um, hydrogels are e being used for drug delivery, what is the concept there, so there is a swelling based method and then uh, also discussed some of the uh, mathematics behind how to figure out how much swelling ratio is there, how much uh, the pore size is in a hydrogel, so that helps us in defining what kind of drug to use and what drug is feasible as well as what will be the release rate of the drug. So now, uh, so these were all macro devices, uh, more, more often than not we require surgery although in terms of hydrogels we were talking about in situ cross linking and that means that we do not have to do surgery we can directly inject, but for nearly all other types of uh, applications we have discussed so far uh, in terms of uh, matrix, a reservoir and all kinds of things, we are talking about some either a small surgery or big surgery being performed to put these things in and uh, in some cases also another surgery being performed to take them out. So, today we are going to talk about uh, another class of uh, drug release uh, devices and these are macro and nano devices and very very big uh, famous words these days uh, lots and lots of research are going on in terms of making micro particles, nano particles and then using them for clinical applications and so we will we'll talk about and discuss this in quite a bit of detail as to what these things are and how they are being used for different applications. Okay, so let us start with the nano and micro particles. So, like what we have discussed in the past with all kinds of our uh, initial systems as matrix and reservoir, these are also control release depot systems. Um, very similar to these matrices, reservoirs, and hydrogels, they can take any of these forms, but now instead of having a big macro device, you have now split that into small, small devices and what that allows you to do now is basically uh, directly inject these devices into the body using some syringe right, because this you cannot use the syringe because this is let us say 1 centimeter or even higher, but now that these are less than a millimeter, now that these are less than let us say 1 millimeter we can use standard syringes uh, which uh, are uh, having diameters in some micron ranges and directly inject it into our system wherever we want to put them in. So, um, this also allows you to sort of uh, decrease the non-specific delivery of the drug to non-target tissues. So, um, basically earlier let us say if I want to deliver something to my brain, I cannot really put a device to my brain because the brain is a very sensitive organ and I do not want to damage it. So, maybe I was putting it under my skin somewhere and then hoping that the drug will 
then come out from this and diffuse and go into the brain. But now uh, with these injections uh, I can find a small pocket where I can inject without worrying about damage to the brain itself and so that will basically mean that more of my drug is going to get released in the tissue that I want rather than relying on the body to diffuse it or to take it to different organs. As I said the one of the biggest advantage is they are injectable, so there is really no need for surgical implantation. Um, one of the biggest issue uh, with this is the hospital visits and the patient compliance every time we talk about surgery the patients are also worried about their lives uh, and there can be lots and lots of complications that may happen anesthesia is involved and th those can always be little tricky and then um, there are chances of more and more infections because once your body is open um, from the environment you can contract lots and lots of different types of infections. So all of that can be sort of uh, uh, countered using uh, these particles. It is again a very convenient way to deliver things inside the cells. So, um, uh, so far what we have been doing is we have been relying on the drug to basically go and diffuse into the cell um, that is ok for small drugs which are fairly amphiphilic or hydrophobic, but for the drugs which are large and hydrophilic or maybe even charged uh, those drug molecules do not really diffuse into the cells. So, let us say if I want to make a device or a drug that is targeting uh, the DNA of a cell, then the cell is a very good barrier. Uh, these lipid membranes that, you, that are present on the cell, uh, any kind of hydrophilic molecule will be just repelled away and uh, it would not be able to enter the cell. But uh, we will talk about how uh, these nano and micro particles can actually help us target this intracellular niche as well if we want to target that. And then uh, of course they can uh, we can also further target them so that uh, what types of cells or what types of tissues we want them to go to even though they might be systemically administered uh, because they are small and they can go around and explore their way through different areas. You can have a situation where you can put let us say uh, if this is flowing in a blood vessel let us say if this is the blood vessel. and your particles are flowing let us say this is a healthy region this is a healthy tissue and then this blood vessel is now traversing to let us say uh, disease tissue. And maybe due to the disease there may be some markers that are being expressed on to these endothelial cells which are not present here. So, what you can put what you can do is you can put a subsequent ligand on these particles and since they are flowing they will explore and essentially use these uh, ligands to sort of bind to the receptors and they can hence impart more specificity right because what will happen is more and more of these particles will accumulate at the disease site while they continue to flow through the healthy tissue. So, that is uh, another way that these particles give you a lot more control and targeting than let us say a big macro device. And then um, like the macro device uh, they can improve the stability of the drug in vivo. Um, of course, if there is enzymes uh, that can degrade the drug. Uh, these particles uh, at least till they are flowing in the blood uh, they will prevent uh, this enzyme to access to get access to the drug and only when the drug is released from the particle or uh, when they have reached the target site is these can enzymes can act. So, this essentially gives you an additional stability for the drug molecule. And then it also improves the shelf life for the same reason now this drug uh, is not uh, really liable to degrade uh, due to various processes that might be present uh, in your storage buffer or in storage conditions. So, these polymers sort of act as shield. So, till they are given and administered into the patient they might be able to increase the shelf life of the product. So, let us say if a drug was very liable to uh, degradation over time uh, due to some particular contamination in your storage or due to some temperature fluctuations. Uh, these polymers may increase the shelf life by any anything between 10 percent to 100 percent or um, just depends on the drug that you are using. 
Okay, so I mean um, let us talk about further of particles in drug delivery. So, particles are fairly standard, uh, these are uh, some SEM images scanning electron microscope, images of the particles which show some polymeric particles of uh, various sizes into this mixture. And so, let us define few things. So, uh, micro particles are typically defined in the literature for uh, a size greater than 1 micron uh, in any of the dimensions, uh, but they can be spherical, they can be some other shape as well. But if the micro particle size is greater than 1 micron or the particle size is greater than 1 micron, typically between 1 to 100, that is typically defined as a micro particle. Nano particles uh, are defined in the size range of anything between 10 nanometer to 1000 nanometer. Again these are, uh, uh, these are not standards, these are something that uh, generally the field follows, uh, but what, what you will find is in, even in the literature people may have a 2 micron particle and they may refer to that as nano particle and vice versa they may have a 500 nanometer particle which they might refer to as a micro particle. So, these definitions are a bit fluidic, but uh, this is what typically is being defined here. The drugs, drugs are typically small molecules, they, uh, these could be proteins uh, which are fairly large, uh, these could be nucleic acids, peptides, could be any kind of drug essentially enzymes, um, they are typically encapsulated in these particles, uh, but uh, one thing that you will find different here compared to your matrices is uh, they can also be adsorbed or covalent linked to the surface, right. So, because what you have done now is earlier you had a macro device and that had a surf, had a certain surface area, which was fairly low when you compare the amount that can be added here in the bulk volume in this large bulk volume versus something on the surface. Um, the ratio was fairly low for the surface area, but now what you have done is you have now broken this down into several small small particles. So, the amount of the drug that can be loaded on the surface has become quite significant when you compare it to the amount of drug that can be put in the bulk volume. So, uh, so with the micro particles and nano particles you now even have uh, that capability that you can put things on the surface and be still be able to load quite a lot of drug. And uh, as your uh, this as the size decreases the surface area to volume ratio will increase right. So, let us say for a particle what is the surface area? Let us say it is a spherical particle. So, we have surface area and we have volume. So, for spherical particle the volume is nothing but 4 by 3 pi r cube. What is surface area for a sphere? It is nothing but 4 pi r square right and uh, so when I say that the surface area by volume will increase as the particle size goes down. So, let us do that. So, let us say surface area by volume. So, that will essentially give us 4 pi r square divided by 4 pi r cube by 3. So, 4 pi gets cancelled, the r square and r cube get cancelled. So, all we get is essentially 3 by r. This is for a spherical particle. Right. So, as the r increases the ratio decreases and as the r decreases this ratio increases. So, eventually when you shift from this to this and further down to nano particles, so let us say if these are micro and then you go down further to nano, what you will find is that the r is constantly decreasing as you are going there and your surface area to volume ratio is increasing. So, now you can load more drug in on the surface than in the volume at a certain size range for a certain application. And then of course, uh, these particles can be in form of as I said, uh, they can take various forms, they can either be, um, they can they can either be a matrix, they can either be a reservoir. So, you can have sort of uh, particles that are completely hollow. So, you can load your drug in them. So, they are sort of a mimic for a reservoir system or you can have a particle which is completely filled with polymer 
and then the drug is essentially just encapsulated in between these polymer chains. So, this is sort of a matrix system and then as I said matrix systems can both be erodible or non erodible. So, these particles can also have the same form they can either degrade and release the drug or the drug just has to diffuse out from these polymer matrices. So, all of those are fairly feasible the same applications and the same sort of kinetics are applied just the surface area and the volume has changed. Okay. So, um, some more terms definition here um, what we are looking at is uh, the uh, filtration through kidney. So, this is essentially kidney that is zoomed in and what we are looking at here is the interface between the blood vessels and the and the and the kidney cells. So, uh, we have discussed this briefly earlier, but then uh, typically now we are trying to find out uh, what will give us an enhanced circulation of these particles in vivo. So, if I have if I have a particle which is let us say in 100 nanometer size range right what will happen is uh, the endothelia itself is tight enough uh, that these particles cannot go into the kidney cells or the kidney tissue. So, these endothelial cells and whatever the surface proteins and glycoproteins that are present will be able to block that. Now, as your size decreases from 100 nanometer down to 10 nanometer uh, this blocking will still happen but the blocking will continue to reduce. Once you go down below 6 nanometer where uh, these particles can now between let us say 2 to 6 nanometer they can just pass through that and again the smaller you are the more the permeability. So, what you will find is uh, in they will start going in the kidney tissue in higher numbers as it goes down. However, what happens is at a certain size range uh, let us say below 1 nanometer or around 1 to 2 nanometer what will happen is now their sizes are so small that they may start interacting with these protein surface. So, if I zoom into this this is essentially nothing but a cell surface with uh, lots and lots of proteins and uh, sugar moieties that are present in the cell membrane. So, earlier what was happening if I have particle which is fairly big compared to all these this particle was not even going in there and will just go out from some surrounding area. But now that the particle has decreased and it has become a size which can actually go into these glycocalyx or glycoproteins what will happen is will start going in there gets entrapped and has to go through a long tortuous route before it can go out. So, because of that now their residence time or at least the filtration through kidney has become lower and lower. So, this happens to a certain extent and then there will be a time when this size becomes so, so small that even if it interacts with it it still goes right through. So, what you find is that the filtration by the kidney essentially act as a band pass where uh, anything above 6 nanometer is not filtered at all whereas, as uh, as you decrease the size from 6 nanometer down to 1 nanometer more and more particles get cleared, but if you go further down then uh, it gives much more resistance as well. So, that is just something to uh, sort of understand and remember. So, again and this is just uh, describing what I just said. So, nanoparticles with the hydrodynamic diameter of greater than 100 cannot traverse through the endothelium in between 6 and nanometer they cannot cross this uh, basement membrane uh, which is fairly uh, impermeable to any of these particles. Once you get down between 1 and 6 nanometer they can go through this basement membrane. So, basement membrane is nothing but a membrane below the endothelial cells and uh, the smaller they are the faster they will go up to 1 nanometer or so. And then uh, the nanoparticles with the hydrodynamic diameter even less than 1 nanometer what will happen is they will then interact with this endothelial glycocalyx and that would mean that the once they are in that size range in the similar pore size they will interact more they will have a longer path they will then to travel and that will cause the smaller particles uh, to have a larger residence in the blood vessel in this region then let us say a smaller particle. 
and see let, let's talk about how the charge plays a role let's say now the particles can also be charged they are still moving around so the charge could be either it's negative or it is neutral or it's positive so what happens in all three conditions so as we see here um, if it's uh, if it's fairly neutral um, there is really um, uh, not a whole lot of interaction that is happening so it may have a certain uh, certain sort of a flow through that but the basement membrane itself is sort of negatively charged so if you have positively charged particles because of the electrostatic interaction more and more will come and they will have a higher uh, flow through that weakly negative charge also does not really play a whole role but if it is highly negatively charged they will be repelled by the basement membrane and they will have a higher circulation time. So that is what is written here so um, essentially positively charged negative particles are cleared faster than the neutral ones followed by the negatively charged particles basically this is essentially this basement membrane which is negatively charged and that is why you see the effect that I just described ok uh, I will stop right here and uh, we will continue in the next class thank you.